Welcome to the Grand Canyon. At 277 miles long, more than a mile deep, formed by the Colorado River, the Grand Canyon is a natural wonder. At its widest point, 18 miles across, and four miles at its narrowest point. In this video, we'll show the many ways to explore the canyon. The Grand Canyon changes you, not only physically, but mentally, especially if you spend some time inside. One of the best ways to experience the nature of the canyon is on a mule. You can take to the canyon's floor or around the south rim. This is the most clear and defined and oldest section of Earth's history that you can find anywhere on the planet. We'll explore the canyon from the sky by plane and with two different helicopter flights. One over the south rim and the other into Grand Canyon West to the floor as we hop on a thrilling boat ride on the Colorado River. We take you on one of three Jeep tours available. Hear interesting info from our guide. Desert white sage, now sage you can use for cooking. We show the Grand Canyon Railway from Williams, Arizona to the Grand Canyon Village. We explore several of the Vista points along the South Rim by Jeep and by bike. Show you around Market Plaza and Grand Canyon Village. Then take the shuttle all the way to Hermit's Rest. Show the hiking and biking trails. Then on the West Rim, explore Eagle Point, where the Skywalk is located at. Then travel to Guano Point, where you can learn more about the Hualapai tribe. We'll take you to Arizona, located in Williams, Arizona, a drive through wildlife park, where you can see some exotic animals. Also tour the Highway 66 Museum in Kingman, we give some tips on lodging. It's time to giddy up. We are cleared for takeoff. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as we help to prepare you for your Grand Canyon getaway. Flagstaff, Arizona is a 90 minute drive to the Grand Canyon and really a cool mountain town to check out. One of the best cities for mountain biking and hiking and a beautiful town in winter as well. Did a video of Flagstaff three years ago that you can check out if you'd like. We'll check out a couple of other nearby towns at Williams and Kingman later. The Grand Canyon Williams KOA is the closest KOA to the canyon and an easy 45 minute drive to the South Rim entrance makes it a good base camp open from March through October. They have quaint pet friendly cabins, tent sites, and full hookups for RVs. Tucson is the nearest town to the canyon. Just a couple miles from the entrance, there are eateries, lodging, and Jeep, helicopter, and plane tours that depart from here. I chose the Grand Canyon Plaza Hotel, a three-star pet-friendly hotel, was very pleased. Convenient parking where you can park next to your room, easy in, easy out with my Timber Ridge beach cart. The room's very comfortable. The bathrooms actually have two separate sinks, reasonable pet fee at $50 per stay. The Yavapai Lodge inside the Grand Canyon National Park, also pet-friendly at $25 per night, pet fee. This plaza hotel has a nice atrium with a pool and jacuzzi. Also found it convenient for food with two restaurants inside. It was easy to call in an order and pick up a meal. For breakfast, there's a McDonald's across the street in a nice area on the backside of hotel to eat your food while enjoying the nature. Also at Tucson is the Grand Canyon Airport where a wide variety of tours by plane or helicopter depart from. I chose Papillon. It's $229 for a 25 minute tour or $339 for a 45 minute tour, which is what I did because it takes you all the way to the North Rim. It is $50 to request a front seat. Later in the video, we'll show you the West Rim helicopter tour, which has an advantage of going into the canyon. A look at the North Rim, which is roughly 2,000 feet higher than the South Rim, therefore gets a little more rain and tends to be a little greener. The tours from the South Rim are not allowed to fly into the canyon, but the canyon is much wider here and you see rock formations over a greater area. 
Papillon also has a combo helicopter Hummer tour. There are three different Jeep tours you can take. One of the most popular is Pink Jeep, located at the Grand Canyon Visitor Center, which is next to our Plaza Hotel. While each company has their advantages, I looked at the roominess and comfort of the vehicle, so I decided to go with Buckwild Hummer Tours. And Bella seemed to enjoy it as well. The seats are very roomy, lots of open air flowing through. Pink Jeep has a three-hour sunset tour that is $143 for adults, $130 for children, two through 15. Buck Wild Sunset Tour is a two-hour tour, but that was plenty for me. It's $120 for adults and $109 for children, 3 to 15. Both these companies have cheaper tours during the day. They take you to places you probably wouldn't know about on your own, as well as sharing fascinating info and tips. Down, you're going to see these big black blobs in the tree. Right. Okay, those are turkey vultures. Juniper, it's considered a cedar tree, and we all know cedar is a very useful tree. Okay, we've taken you inside the National Park via tours. Now we'll drive in. A tip on the front entrance. Because of the big toll booths on the left, people don't realize the far right lane is an entrance as well with a really small booth. I guess they assume it's a private entrance. So if it's crowded, try the lane all the way to the right. This deer near the entrance sign, welcoming people as they enter the National Park. You do regularly see deers walking around here. I can now say I climb the Grand Canyon even if it was only the sign. Now let's show you how to enter the canyon by train. To do that, we take you back to Williams, Arizona. But first, let's show you a couple of things you can do in Williams before or after your train ride. Williams is a small town nestled in the pine country, an hour south of the canyon. There is less expensive lodging and dining in this area. Williams retains a lot of the Route 66 history with a vintage style downtown. There's the Station 66 restaurant with wood-fired pizza and craft beer. Nice elevated outdoor patio seating. There's the Canyon Coaster Adventure Park. The coaster is about $20 for adults, $10 for children under 54 inches. They also have tubing both in summer and winter snow tubing. Besides the railway, the most popular attraction is Arizona, a drive-through wildlife park where you see bears, of course, but also wolves bison, mountain goats, and more. During weekdays, it's $30 for adults, $25 for children, 4 through 12. Add $5 for weekends. There's a cafe here, as well as an area where you can walk around and see the animals. The Grand Canyon Scenic Railway has their own hotel that is across the street from the station. The steam engine pulls the train the first Saturday of the month, April through September. The Polar Express trains run November and December. It takes passengers to see Santa Claus and his reindeers. Very popular. For the scenic train ride into the canyon, rates are as low as $51 for a round trip in coach class, with options available for the observation dome and the luxury dome around $200. It's a two-hour entertaining train ride with Western musicians and cowboy characters on vintage rail cars while seeing areas of the national park that you don't see from the roadways. It arrives at the historic train station at Grand Canyon Village on the South Rim where you get three hours to explore before the train then departs back to Williams. This engineer, very friendly, gave me a bottle of water for Bella. At Grand Canyon Village is Bright Angel Lodge. This is where the mule rides depart from. The lodge is a complex of cabins around a central lodge building, not pet friendly if wondering. You book the mule ride by calling this number. There are two types of mule rides. First, a tour where you ride the mule along the Bright Angel Trail to Phantom Ranch at the floor of the canyon. This is a two day trip. It takes five and a half hours to the bottom where you stay at a cabin. Riders must weigh less than 200 pounds fully dressed and in decent physical shape. Not a whole lot of room for air. They've been doing these rides for 100 years and no one has died yet. Or you can also do the two hour mule ride along the top of the south rim of the canyon, which is what I did. 
Riders must be less than 225 pounds for this trip. It's $160 per person. They give you a free desert style water bottle. A shuttle takes you to the Yaki Barn, five miles east of the village, which is where the mule rides begin. Up and over. Long sleeve shirts, a broad brimmed hat, and closed toed shoes are required. Recommended ski caps and gloves for winter riders. Our guide, Joanna, was great. A mule is the result of a female horse mated with a male donkey. All the mules used here come from Tennessee. You ask why mules? Mules are used because they are more sure-footed than horses. They can see all the way behind them. They can see their back feet. Horses tend to go out or they'll skip and you'll have footprints right next to each other. If you watch the mule in front of you, you'll notice that its back foot lands directly in where that front foot was. Also, a mule is smarter than a horse. Horse equivalent to a human is one to two years old, but a mule is equal to a five to six year old human. You can train a horse to skydive or dive off of high dives into water bodies. You'll never get a mule to do that. Horses need water every day, whereas mules can go five to seven days without water. Going across the rocky location. That's an osprey, guys. Before we head to Grand Canyon West, I want to show you a little around Grand Canyon Village. This is part of the South Rim Trail that we'll talk about more in a little bit. Usually a lot of pedestrian traffic in this part of the trail at the village. Besides Bright Angel Lodge, there are three other lodges including the crown jewel of the canyon, the European El Tovar Lodge, a kind of a cross between a Swiss chalet and a Norwegian villa. Next to El Tovar Lodge is the Hopi House, inside authentic American Indian arts and crafts. Also here is the visitor center, gift shop, and museum. There's a food truck to grab a quick bite to eat. They had a really good vegetarian burger. The South Rim Trail heading east from the village area goes on for another four and a half miles to South Kaibab Trailhead, passing Mather Point and the Geology Museum, where we show the sunset on the Hummer Tour. The South Kaibab Trail is 6.3 miles long, takes you to the floor of the canyon, about 46 hours to hike each way. It's more strenuous than the Bright Angel Trail, although slightly more scenic. Mather Point is where there are the most guardrails, yet it is also the place where there are the most falls. Be careful. If you do fall and have to be rescued due to something stupid you did, it could be anywhere from $10,000 to $100,000 to pay for the rescue. There's also the Greenway Trail System, a 13-mile paved walking and biking path that connects Tucson and Grand Canyon Village. A mile and a half west of the visitor center is Market Plaza Village Market, where you can get groceries, souvenirs, along with camping and hiking gear. Next to the village market is the Yavapai Lodge that we mentioned earlier. They have a rustic tavern restaurant with casual pub fare here, outdoor seating. Now let's show you the areas west of Grand Canyon Village to Hermit's Rest. This part of the canyon, you have to either take the free shuttle or bike or hike. The shuttle buses are equipped with bike racks. We're gonna get back on the South Rim Trail. This trail runs from South Kaibab Trailhead all the way to Hermit's Rest, a total of 13 miles. Most of the trail is paved and pretty easy. Our first stop, Trail View Overlook. We ain't got pockets full of money, but we're rich in other things. This highway is our living room, we're swimming in the mystery. Next stop, Hopi Point. The Hermit's Road Shuttle runs from March 1st to end of November. Takes you to nine different overlooks, from Bright Angel Lodge to Hermit's Rest. It's about an 80 minute round trip if you don't get off the bus. Keep in mind, the return trip only stops at a couple of those nine Vista points. We arrive at Hermit's Rest, where the paved road ends. There's a souvenir shop and snack bar, crafted out of native rock and stone. It's a resting spot for hikers. That's the name, Hermit's Rest. on 
Mojave Point, a great place for sunset. Now, let's head to Grand Canyon West. If you only have one day to see Grand Canyon West, I think the best tour you can do is the Grand Voyager Rim to River Tour by Papillon Helicopters. It's a combo plane, helicopter, and boat tour. We showed a little of this tour in our Vegas video, but now we'll show you much more. If you begin from Vegas, it's a seven hour tour, but if you begin from Boulder City, Nevada, it's a six hour tour. As the plane flies out of Boulder City, it soars over Lake Mead and Hoover Dam on its way to the Grand Canyon. This tour is $539, currently a $20 fuel charge, and if you want to do the Skywalk, add $60. Below Eagle Point, where the Skywalk is located at, you fly into the top of Grand Canyon West. After you land, you transfer to a helicopter. This is a totally different experience than the South Rim, where you just fly over the canyon. Here, you fly into the canyon. Uh, yes, sir, we're going in. You get an impressive close-up views of the canyon walls. These choppers can hold up to six people, with two people in the front. Uh, roger that, uh, target locked and ready. Uh, requesting permission to land. Once the chopper lands at the bottom of the canyon, you then transfer to a boat for a ride on the Colorado River. This boat ride is only 15 to 20 minutes long, but it's still a good ride. While the South and North Rim is a national park, Grand Canyon West is owned and operated by the Hualapai tribe. If you are driving to Grand Canyon West, you can do a helicopter pontoon tour for about $300, which you can book through the Grand Canyon West website. Also, you can book trips on the Hualapai River Runners, a white water rafting trip available for $400, and a two-day paddle rafting trip for $800. If you have never been to the bottom of the canyon, one way or another, you have to do it to really fully experience the Grand Canyon. We take off back on the helicopter for another impressive ride back to the top of the canyon. There are rustic cabins just south of the airport for up to six guests. They are not pet friendly, but Hualapai Lodge is, However, it's an hour and 45 minute drive away. Next to the cabins is a zip line that is about $39 to $44. At the airport, we transfer to a shuttle to Eagle Point, then Guano Point. With this Rim to River tour after the helicopter ride, you get about 90 minutes to explore on your own via shuttle. The Skywalk is $28 on top of general admission. You are not allowed to bring cameras or phones on the Skywalk. They do have a professional photographer where you can purchase a souvenir photo from. We move on to Guano Point, which gives you a much better view than Eagle Point. The scenery is dramatic. There's a cafe here. More places to play around. You can see Native American tribal structures here. There's a rocky outcrop you can climb for a better view. Also the High Point Hike that goes to a historic tram that once stretched across the canyon. The High Point Hike takes about one to two hours. I would have liked to have had more time they had to be back at the airport for the return flight back to Boulder. If driving to Grand Canyon West, your closest city for lodging and dining is Kingman, Arizona, located about an hour and 20 minute drive to the south. The Route 66 Museum is here at the Kingman Visitor Center. You see Main Street America from the 1950s, learning about the history of this famous highway. It is $10 for adults and $6 for children 12 and under. Includes a film, as well as a vintage electric car section of the museum. A Route 66 statue where you can take a car selfie. Across the street from the museum, Mr. D's, a classic 50s diner. So much great nature areas in this part of the country, outside of the Grand Canyon as well. Sedona, just a two-hour drive to the south. A three-hour drive to the northeast is Monument Valley, where Forrest Gump finally got tired and went home. Or you can stand on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. 
and of course Vegas that we showed in our previous video with so many excursions. Or Lake Tahoe in our last video, an 11 hour drive to the northwest. So hopefully I've given you some ideas. Time to start planning. Hey, I know traveling can be expensive now with fuel costs, but getting out of the house, exploring, helps the mind. Depression can easily set in, and we have to break through that and get back to nature. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. If you would like to hire us to film your area or city, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Coming next, going back to Florida for a big video of Orlando. Then within the next few months, Lord willing, looking to do Hawaii and Alaska. Subscribe and be a part of our travel community. From the great state of Arizona, I wish blessings to you wherever you may be. Fight that depression, meet new people, and enjoy nature.